Hello, this is the Niobrara County Library Oral History Project. Um, it's April 10th, 2024. And once again, we're with May Ellen Ward-Smith. Um, and this is episode two of her uh, history of her family. So May, I'll just leave it up to you. Okay. Even if you had a vehicle, travel in those early, early years had its setbacks as the roads out north were bad. Creeks were impossible to cross sometimes for days and it was years before bridges were built. Then in the 1930, road improvements were on the agenda as more vehicles were acquired. In June 1931, the Lust Manville Oil Project was finished and in November 1931, work was begun on the swinging bridge across Cow Creek. It was made of ca heavy cable, probably from the Lance Creek oil field, and was used until a regular bridge was built in 1939 to 40. At that time, the road didn't go south up over the hill, down and across Lightning Creek as it does now, but went east to Rochelle's and then across Lightning Creek. In 1932, the first paved road between Lusk and Lance Creek was completed. Then in October 1934, work began on the North Road out of Lance Creek where road graders moved dirt between Doggy and Lightning Creeks. The 37 miles was to be done in 33 parts, which included putting in culverts and bridges and supposed to be done by March 1935, but wasn't. In 1936, Highway 85 was whirled. In February 1937, work was started on the Lightning Creek Bridge by relief labor by the county furnishing the materials. Unfortunately, on June 1937, there was a, that new bridge washed out following heavy rains. The 180-foot span was rather low, and for several years, the creek hadn't flooded badly. Accumulation of dead trees and driftwood swept away two sections but the bridge was soon rebuilt. Entertainment was not ignored, even though it meant traveling some distance. Ruth liked to dance. Zeb didn't so much, but they did attend quite a few, which often lasted until daylight. Zeb watched the children and visited with neighbors while Ruth danced. They went to picnics, box socials, and school activities, all of which were well attended. There was also some road trips to Nebraska and Missouri to see family or for a funeral. Often these trips were taken with the family members as so expenses were shared. It seemed that every summer the Ward-Wagner group would get together, often at the Ward Ranch. Both Zeb and Ruth were great readers and they encouraged their children to be the same. Zeb had donated to the library building fund when he first came to the county, and on trips to Lusk, they often got a few books from the library, returning them with the mail carrier. After moving to Manville, the library was used more. A question for you, May. Um, when they traveled long distances mm -hmm. and many days, did they camp out? Is that how they spent the night? <laughs> I, I would assume so, but you know, that's a question I never did ask. Usually people did in those days, you know. Yeah, but I would say so because, uh -huh. so like I said, funds were, you know, that's pretty right. scarce. That's so. right. I didn't know yeah. if they stayed with relatives along the way. Well, or? some of them, mm -hmm. some would, you know, because mm -hmm. they did have quite a few relatives going. Mm -hmm. so. That was the days when camping actually started, mm -hmm. those early, yeah. early vehicles. Yeah. I never did ever think to ask that question. <laughs> right. And always by the time you think to ask these oh, questions, yeah. the people that could answer them are not here anymore. So, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. Well, I'm glad you're putting this together for your families. <laughs> okay. When Zeb first arrived in Niobrara County, his mailing address was Dual, Wyoming, according to his 1921 tax billing. The Dual Post Office was located at the Warren Dual Place. And how do you spell Dual? D-U-E-L. D-U-E-L. Okay. June 1918, with the mail coming from Lost Franks. Then in July 1924, a post office was established at Leverett on Cow Creek with Marion Miller as postmaster, then C.A. Johnson, Doris Schimmick before it was moved to the Earl Slagle Ranch with Harriet Slagle as postmistress in 1934. In March 1929, the Doggy Creek Post Office was established at the E.H. Butler Ranch with Rita Butler as postmistress. The wards got mail there until 1939 when the post office was closed and then their address reverted back 
to Lever End until it closed. Then Lance Creek became their mailing address. Luther Buster Panfield Sr. ran the mail route for 50 years, and at the beginning it ran from Lance Creek to Cheyenne River by Lever Leverett and Doggy, approximately 92 miles round trip. It was mostly done by vehicle, but if the ranch roads were bad, Buster would go horseback and sometimes with a pack horse. Buster would also deliver groceries, medicines, or anything else people needed or give someone a ride. And Buster is Luther? Mm -hmm. That's his name? That was his nickname, Buster? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. And they have a big thing on, uh, on our website about, about his. Oh. Uh, about him and his lot, his family, but a lot of it had to do with his uh, mail route. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Good news. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Mm -hmm. that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deb kept improving the ranch, adding new barns, more barns, sheds, and corrals, digging and drilling wells, and putting in dikes. When the Hockets moved to Nebraska, he bought their place, and a little later he added the Wells property and was able to lease some surrounding BLM land. In the mid-1940s, he purchased a well drilling unit, adding some more wells to help water the cattle. None of the wells produced good drinking water, so that continued to be hauled and stored in the underground cistern. He also put in a battery-powered 32-volt system to help light the house. Electricity was not available until the early 1950s. And how did he generate the electricity? He have a windmill? No, he had batteries. Oh, batteries. How were the batteries charged? Huh. That's a good question. I guess I don't know. I just remember all the batteries setting down there. Yeah, but I know maybe people they used did. a wind, a maybe wind generator. Maybe they did use the windmill. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah, no, like I said, that was one thing I never I know it of. wasn't solar, though, right? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't that. <laughs> to help supplement the wood for heating and cooking, Zeb would often get a load of coal. There were several places in the surrounding areas where there were small coal veins. At the Calgar Place, about one and a half miles west of Wards, the vein was down in a draw and dug back in the bank. This coal wasn't really good, and you had to haul the coal up in a bucket. The loop-de-loop -loop vein, located near where the road forked west to Smith's and north to O'Brien's, was better and thicker. Other veins were at Ed Shimmick Place and Manny Robinson's. Also at the time, there was an underground burning coal mine in the Cow Creek Butte area. It covered four to five acres and burned until the 1950s when it was finally put out. Old-timer Johnny Howard claimed it was started by a cowboy who made his campfire on a vein. Rouse snakes were plentiful down in the cracks around the area as it was warm. Mm, mm, yeah. So you want to watch it. <laughs> okay, I, I said, Zeb continued to be involved in the ranch after moving to Manville, but as they had more free time, he turned his attention to the oil activity and interest he had since, since the Lance Creek, Buck Creek, fields were established in 1918. He had also been in Weston County in March 1920 and saw the first big gusher producing 1,728 barrels come in in the Old Stage oil field, 13 miles north and west of Newcastle, turning the eyes of the world, or oil world onto a new and comparatively unknown oil field. Over the years, Zeb had kept up with what was going on in the oil world. He spent hours studying geology reports of various land formations, as well as reading numerous oil magazines. A well had been dri drilled on the ranch, but hopes were shattered when it was declared a dry hole and plugged. Now Zeb did some leasing of his own, hoping to hit the big one. He even speculated in uranium, but nothing came of any of it. In May 1949, Zeb helped organize the Nile Oil Company. Directors were C. E. Marvin, George Earl P., Florence Godfrey, F. Everett Brooks, C. W. Ward, George Duell, and C. W. Irwin. The company drilled several producing wells and sold 500,000 shares. Most of Zeb's family had some shares, which paid dividends when here. The company was dissolved in the early 1970s. Zeb also became involved in the operation of the town of Manville. He served on the town council for several years, and he also 
plotted maps of the water sewer lines as well as the Delview Cemetery where the Ward family has a blog. Zeb was a big reader with various interests. Religion was one of them and one of the local ministers took great delight in bringing a visiting colleague over to Zeb's. Then they sat back and listened to the intense discussion they would have knowing that Zeb would prevail <laughs> in making his point. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like quite the character. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to town didn't change things too much for Ruth. Having running water, electricity, a fuel, oil furnace, and an indoor bathroom made her chores easier. She acquired a refrigerator and a kitchen stove with both wood and gas. Instead of heating water on the stove for washing clothes, she only had to fill a pail from a hot water faucet and pack it to her ringer washing machine and wash tubs. Her garden was smaller, but she still canned vegetables, made jams and jellies. She missed having a milk cow, but she had a few chickens for eggs. Her neighbors were closer and once organized, easier to visit. A plus was that her next door neighbor was Ida Gentry, who had lived out north and was the Lance Kirk postmistress for years. Ruth joined the Manville Homemaker Club, became involved in community affairs. She still did crocheting, embroidering, quilting, and sewing. She made most of May's clothes while she was in school. She was a good seamstress, which helped, as May liked to design her clothes, which often involved numerous patterns and alterations in getting the garment made. Even after May was married, Ruth was called on to help make a garment for a special occasion. The Ward home in Manville became the setting for most family holiday celebrations and family reunions. It was not unusual for there to be a gathering of 26 to 45 people. This continued until the late 1970s when many of the family left the area because of school jobs, marriage, or marriages. Now, many, May is the only one left in Niagara County. In 1966, Deb and Ruth moved from the Cheney Log House across from the school to the Stoddard House, two houses west. Grant's family moved into the Log House so the kids could attend high school in Lusk. May now owns the Log House as well as the Stoddard House. Zeb and Ruth celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary on April 16, 1972 with an open house at their home in Manville given by their children with May baking and decorating the cake. It was well attended by family and friends from Manville and the North Country. In December 1974, Zeb was diagnosed with cancer and he passed away on March 6, 1975. After Zeb's death, Ruth continued to live in Manville. She kept busy with her hobbies and traveling. Ruth didn't drive, but as that was a well-known fact, she never lacked a ride to where she needed to go, and family members were good to include her in their travels. May arranged the 75th birthday open house for Ruth on Sunday, December 17, 1978, and afterwards, Ruth informed her she didn't want another big birthday celebration until she was 90. <laughs> May believes Ruth and that said that because she didn't expect to live that long. Mm -hmm. However, she did, and May held a 90th birthday open oh. house for her at the Mandel School Building on Sunday, December 18, 1993. Besides making and decorating the cakes, May had put together a photo album of Ruth's life. Because December is not a good month for traveling, a family reunion was held at Fred's out of Lander, Wyoming on June 25, 1994 also in honor of Ruth's 90th birthday. Only a few members of her immediate family were unable to attend, but quite a few nieces and nephews made it. Ruth spent the summer of 1994 doing a lot of traveling with family members and enjoying herself. The middle of November she complained of stomach pain and she was admitted to the hospital in Las where she was diagnosed with cancer. She passed away on November 27, 1994, and was buried in the Lust Cemetery beside Zeb, Zeb's brother, Ruth Susan Wagner, Zeb's brother Nolan, and their daughter, Grace Vera. In 1996, the Ward Ranch was sold to Tom Lamp, who still owns it. So the house that Tom has out there um, is the house that Zeb mm -hmm. lived in. So. Okay, I had heard that there was a house on the other side of the creek. Is that not true? That was where Wills's lived. Ah, okay. On the other side. But I, don't, I don't think there's That was anything. not a ward house on no. the other side of Dogie Creek. No, on the north side of Wills, 
and then John Jolly lived just up the creek. Okay, okay, but Tom's house is the one. Yeah. The original house. Okay, mm -hmm. good, good to know. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All three war boys were in the service. Grant was in the Army, Charlie and Fred were in the Navy. And after Grant was discharged, he took a job with Shell Oil Company working in Wyoming, Texas, and Canada. He returned to the ranch to take over its operation in 1948. On June 1, 1953, he married Ella Marie Sides, daughter Scott and Esther Townsend Sides. Their children are Washington Scott, Ruth, Ella, Lydia Ione, George Grant, and Earlene Esther. Grant stayed on the ranch until it was sold in 1996. He also worked for the county for many years. Grant passed away January 5, 2001. Marie passed away October 2, 2017. Both are buried at the Delview Cemetery in Manville. Ruth Ella passed away January 5, 2023 and is buried at the Lovell Cemetery in Lovell, Wyoming. After Charlie was discharged, he returned home and worked at various jobs. On August 1, 1947, he married Estella Jean Peterson, daughter of John and Ida May Kelly Peterson. And for a time, he worked for this, a seismograph company in Louisiana. Their children were Alfred Claude and Robert Charles. Charlie and Stella were divorced in August 1950. Charlie and Alfred went to live with Zeb and Ruth in Manville while Bob remained with Stella. On November 29, 1953, Charlie married Carrie Irene Dehaven, daughter of John Anna, Anna Arilla Johnson Dehaven. Bob soon rejoined the family. Charlie and Carrie were the parents of Sandra Kay, Wade William, and Chris Nolan. Charlie worked for Wilson Plumbing, Julius Peterson, Northside Service, and Paul Haney. Charlie passed away on August 23, 1971, and Carrie on November 18, 2022. Both are buried at the Delview Cemetery at Manville. After Fred was discharged, he ma mainly worked at road construction. He married Ethel Catherine Kit Morris, daughter of Ray and Raymond and Dolores Vaughn Morris on September 27, 1957. They had a daughter, Beth Melinda, and they adopted their grandson, Fred Heath. Besides road construction, Fred also worked in sales farm, beef management, and did truck driving. He owned a salvage yard in Lusk and had his own trucking business for a time. Kit passed away on February 8, 2022. Fred passed away on February 16, 2023. Both are buried at the Delview Cemetery in Manville. During her school years, May babysat it, uh, did tutoring, dishwashing, and waitressing. And she married Raymond Everett Smith, son of Everett Minus George and Ida Alice Cedric Smith on July 1, 1961. For the next 23 years, they lived and worked on ranches where they could run their own cattle. In the fall of 1984, they sold their cattle and moved to Manville. Raymond worked for the town of Manville until October 2008 during ranch work in his off time. In June 1985, May started work at the Nyberg County Library as assistant librarian where she still works. Other jobs she's had were curator at the Stagecoach Museum, clerk treasurer for the town of Manville. May still lives in Manville. Raymond passed away on March 26, 2019, was inducted into the Wyoming Cowboy Hall of Fame on Sunday, September 22, 2019, in Castle. Goodness sakes. So, wow, quite the history. <laughs> wow. wow. So you have, um, you, you still live in Manville, and you live then across from, to the north of the, of the uh, school? school? When, You're directly when north? I, mm -hmm. when, when I was a girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and where do you live now, then? I live two houses down. Two houses to the west? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And the Stoddard house. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I know that house. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Good, yeah. good. Well, at a future time, I'd like to talk to you about what you remember about the ranches that you, you and Raymond worked on. Oh, okay. And where you lived, and the people that you worked for, and I think that the community would like to hear those stories. It was early days in the... The ranching community. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I could probably do that. Okay. And I'll also, have to give it some thought. <laughs> oh, sure you would. But your memory is good. I can tell. <laughs> and then, um, anything that you want to talk about in terms of um, the early earlier days in Manville? Um, what stores were there? What it was like living there? Um, okay. Um, anything you remember about the growth of the town, the railroad, 
you know, the buildings that used to be there that may not still be there, what, you know, anything yeah. that you can remember about what it looked like and some of the people that lived there and some of the politics maybe or so like I, when we first started moved into town of course it was a lot of the businesses and everything was gone you know mm. and, stuff and you moved into town in 49 oh 19. so manville was no longer a thriving town in oh 49. not that that a time oh. we had a grocery store and uh, the post office and a cafe and uh, there was a wife's shop and kind of a little, I don't know, general store kind of like mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. But that was that was found in. When do you think the uh, high point of Manville was? Oh, in the boom days, when when in the twenties, uh, in the late teens and twenties. Probably up to maybe thirty, and then mm -hmm. after that, I think it kind mm -hmm. of kind of went downhill. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Well, we'll pick up on that at the next one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anything else you remember, make notes. Okay. Debbie? She can't hear you. Yeah, I know. I'll go get her. I don't know how to turn this off.